Hey guys, and how's it going? It's uh, been a little while since I've worked on the 65 Econoline Super Special that uh, I guess we can call it a, a field find. It was uh, left for dead behind someone's house for a long period of time. We dragged it out, oh, it's been about six months ago, and did a bunch of work to it, got the mechanicals working, did a, a yard drive, got the brakes working, started on the metal work, and that's where we kind of left off. Since then, I've done some more work to it. It's been covered up in other videos, so you couldn't see it, but we're gonna go move forward with some more work on it, and we'll get that undone, and I'll show you. The boss is hanging out with me tonight, right? And hang out. She's uh, had a birthday last week. She's 15. Lily's 15. Right, honey? Can't hear. Can't see her very well. <laughs> she smells fine, though. Not that she smells. I mean, she could smell fine. That makes her like 105. Right, honey? So she's going to hang out with me. Do a little bit of wrenching. On the last video, we got all the metalwork cut and fit. I think we made the the rocker panels down below, but nothing was welded. And then the floor on the inside. So this is where it is now. The rocker is welded, the inside of the rocker is welded. Quarter panel and the rear axe se section there. Let's get you a little close up on it. Yeah, so the, we'll start from up in here. You can see where it's all been re-welded back in. And it was stepped to give us a room to fill it. And it's pretty decent. Should work for us pretty good. Patched a dent up in there, a hole rather, and then pulled that back out. There you get the quarter panel, get the glare off you. That's all welded, and then it's spot welded for the wheel well, is right here on the inside. So I spot welded it from the back. Got a patch in the wheel well. Same down here, there's a, there's a panel that drops across here and here. Those are spot welded from the back. Quarters welded in. And then we made a floor panel for it, my first time doing that, and then welded that in and then seam sealed it. And last but not least is this section over here, made this panel. And even got a little fancy. Some bead rolling. I made a bead roller a little while ago and put it to use to stop oil canning is you know, kind of what the idea is there. You see it there. You can see here's some of the original stuff up here. All right. So that's where it is as far as the metal work is done. Back's done going across. And now we're going to come across to this side. This is, has a bunch of Bondo in it. You can already see it. You can see it's got rust holes in it. So I have this section. And then I made another rocker for this side. It needs to get patched in. But it has I get lighting on here. It's got some uh, rust issues on the edges. When we go to dig it back, I'm not sure what we're going to find. But we're going to try to create that and make what we need for that. We will, so far, seems fairly decent. Again, until you grind all the Bondo off, it's kind of hard to tell. That's where we are. One thing I want to do is, go to the other side, you can see better. Before I go too far along, I like these tires that are on it. But you can see from the profile, that, that tire, if it goes the bottom out, is going to go get stuffed right into the lip. Right into that lip right there. And that lip, if it goes up into the tire, is just going to cut right into the tire. So I want to try rolling it. Not that it's still not going to hit, but if it hits, at least it's going to hit on a smooth edge instead of a sharp knife edge that's there. So maybe we'll go start with that first because there's a, again, there's no body work done on it yet. So whatever bending and flexing that we do to it, it's not going to be too detrimental because we can just beat it back into submission if we don't like it. So to try to accomplish that, we are going to try that. A little Louisville slugger. You're supposed to be able to put it up between the tire and the wheel well. You roll the truck back and forth and you can work the lip in an upward position. Usually I think you're supposed to do it with somebody else and they push back and forth and somebody else holds the baseball bat. All I got is me. 
<laughs> and Lily, if you want to include her. She's uh, not very good at pushing, though. Let's go see how it works out. I think we're trying to beat side first. Let's see if we can kind of just get any action happening. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea to me to bump the tire pressures up. Yeah, because that's not going right now. Let's see if we can get a start going. Yeah, I'm going to run those tire pressures up so that the, the bat doesn't want to sink into the tire. As it doesn't want to do that. It's got about 40 pounds in it. I don't think it's going to make much of a difference though. So I have a feeling. Once we get it to start to roll, I might be able to start with maybe a piece of pipe that's fatter. A little bit, just right there, just a little bit of starting. I think I'm going to go try to find something that maybe can fill that gap a little better. That might be a little better. Let's see how this does for us. It's gonna get rust out. Keep working that. I'm gonna get steam in front of the camera. Although I'd like to say that that has worked for us, the gauge of the metal just seems to be too heavy to try to do that. You get a little bit of a roll, but it's not the smooth, consistent see that you thought you were gonna get. So I think best bet is probably to put it back up on the lift. And we'll take the tires off, and maybe we'll do a little force beating, get the section of it kind of rolling up and then maybe come back and revisit that once the angle is more correct. Yeah, you can see where it made a dent right here, but again, it really wasn't influencing it that much. So I think if we can get the angle to taper up enough, and we only really need to go from here to here, the rest of it's not gonna hit anything anyway. Uh, I'm thinking you take a floor jack and like a two by four, and we'll just kind of jack up and push on the lip or lift up on the lip, see if that'll do it for us. Unless see if you have any other thoughts. Let's give that a shot. That doesn't work. We'll get the uh, sledge out and a two by four. Let's see what it does. I don't want to knock it off the lift. That would suck. <laughs> Blister and some. So it's on an even push. Yeah, this side of the truck is already off the ground. Little. Nothing. The problem is too, it's a, it's a double you know, it's, it's, it's the wheel tub also, it's not just the, the wheel well. I think we're going to end up going with the beatings. Yeah. Just kind of lifts this up off the ground. I mean, it went a little, but I'm kind of in the mood to hit it with a hammer anyway. Piece of wood and a hammer. That's more like it. Not sure if I, I skinnied this lineup or not. 
I don't think so. I think it's just because you don't see this reveal. And it looks that way. I don't know if we need, maybe we'll go a little bit. I should probably should have marked it. We're going to center the wheel. I'm forward. I should probably go back just a little further on this side, just to make it even. It's kind of the end result there. So I can say, so when the tire comes up, it has a better chance of not catching the rubber and slicing into it when it was sticking out like that. Might even go, actually the baseball bat, we could probably go back with it. I was just, wish I didn't roll this lip as much right here. But again, we haven't done any of the body work yet to it. So that's what we're practicing on this side. That looks pretty good. Again, we could probably roll it just a little more. But now instead of the sharp edge, would have made contact with it right about here. The rolled edge is going to hit right about here. And I put, I extended the bump stops. I don't know if you can see, it's going to be dark in there. Right behind that shock, right there, that shadow sticking up. That's a extended pad for the bump stop. So the axle can only travel up so far. But what I'm afraid is when you go around a sharp turn and you kind of roll into it and that figure that we're making a turn this way and the tire wants to kind of roll out a little. And I was worried about, even though it couldn't hit, that it could hit. <laughs> Makes sense. All right, I think we're happy enough with that. We know where we're going with it. Do the same with the other side when we're ready to. But for now, I think we're ready to start maybe opening up that body and getting an idea of what we have to work with back there. You know what it is too, is because I've hammered this up, these corners have wanted to pull down, you know, it's your, your bigger, you draw a metal line in there. You push up here, it's going to pull down on that side. And that's what it's doing. That's why that's hanging down more than it actually was before. So I'm going to massage that when we're getting into the, once everything's you know cut and welded, we'll move stuff around where we, we want it. I just wanted to see how it was going to operate before I uh, committed <laughs> or should be committed. You know it's a New England car, when it rots out, you weld in a patch, and then the patch rots out, then you gotta weld in another patch again. <laughs> I have a feeling these are probably just Bondo sitting in front of nothing. up here this is probably where the floor meets in on the other side I'd say say I need a sharpie but I think we're gonna probably just take the plasma cutter maybe we'll just cut it right now back to here back to where the good metal is let me get the patch panel and look at it with that black line is that where the floor is on the inside and our patch it's pretty far up We have rust damage around the corner here too, right there. And then there's even more behind that going up the inside. Cause I just poked my finger through it. I'd say 
we'll just make a slice up higher. I don't know if that, this seems to, it seems to kind of roll back in right about there. I say we just go right for good metal. And we'll make a line. Make a line with tape right there. Maybe we'll slice down below it in a half inch or so for now. Get rid of all this. And we'll whittle that panel down a little bit to kind of sneak up on both of them. And we're probably gonna go get close to this one and then jump to the inside. You know, that way we have both sides to work on at the same time, Just boxing ourselves in. We're gonna go and end up taking that, that edge right off. I know we are. But for now, let's go. Something like that. We'll cut it back that far. This can all go. Nothing to it anyway. And I think we're gonna have rivets, not rivets, spot welds through here. Well, let's slice it here first. We'll kind of pull back on it and then they have a tendency to, to show up a little bit better because the dents up here. At least that's what I'm going to try for. I think trying to save any part of that may be just a waste of time compared to just making it. So there's one piece here and there's one whole piece here. Probably go right to this. Yeah. Don't want to get into this panel because we don't have this one. We can make stuff if we need to, but I'd say we go. I don't know if you should want to fit this one first and then start cutting into this, or do you want to go the other way around? Try to get this out of here and get the rest of that metal off. And we'll go clean it up a little bit. We've got some rust bubbles right in here, which are part of that floor that we're going to be replacing. Let's go open that up and see first if there's any bondo in there. And I have, you know, pretty good feeling that they're going to blow through to be rust holes. I whittled it away a little bit more and I got it down to the cut line. This is going to be a good surface we're going to work with and then you know most of this I still have to clean this up out of here. This I don't see a bunch of rust holes poking through. I do see something happening right there. I don't know about there but we're just going to go cut the floor out of the back side of it. All this is crap anyway. Is there a hammer in here? Yeah. Oh, this is crap. This is all. I think that might be an issue. <laughs> I'm going to take the plasma cutter. I am going to stay within, you know, not damage this piece. We'll slice all this off and then I'm going to see about getting all this metal off of these lips and see how this all looks. That's probably the good way to go that we won't worry about that will fit 
this panel into place and then we'll backfill into there. That's what I say now. We can change it anytime though. After a date with the plasma cutter, I just gotta come back and get all this all this stuff that's the stragglers, peel all that and grind that back to hopefully good edges to work with. Especially right in there, that's where I'm kinda of questioning. I think that's we're gonna end up making a patch, I feel. But I'm not gonna condemn it until I condemn it. And a little more whittling and cleaning. I think I want to start building. I'm tired of whittling and cleaning. So I think we're gonna start on this corner. We need to get this support, which is the strength for the you know the tailgate hangs on the side of that, plus the, the strength of the wall from side to side. The bottom's all blown out. So I'd like to make a patch. Maybe we'll go from say up into there. You gotta come up about that high. Now this is the wall of the patch panel that we already have. But let's go make a piece of metal. And it goes behind this, just like it is there. So I'd say we want to bring it to about about right there. This is gonna get cut out altogether. This can go right away and we'll weld down on here. But let's see if we can make a patch. Roughly that size. And then we'll do another one for this side going out. Same same deal on that part if it's gone. Ideally, it would have been better. Uh, I just did it wrong. I, I made these sections before the panels came in because I wanted to. And I should have taken care of that and worked this way instead of trying to work underneath you know, this new metal that's already here would have been much easier to try to create what went right down into this box but hindsight works that way doesn't it all right let me go make a panel a piece of 16 gauge let's go height wise let's overshoot a little and slice it here and we will make it i want to see that's three quarters of an inch times three quarters of an inch Gets fatter over there, so let's go call it something like that. It gets a little wider here. We'll come in, I'll draw a straight line to there, and we are going to want to bend it from there to there. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I could have come out this way more. That's better. We could whittle that. Whittle down from that. Let's cut some of the crap out of here. Sneak up on it.
So it's got a gap, I don't know, an eighth, maybe a little bigger than an eighth. Let's see if we could take that piece and literally just drive it right up. We're going to try this anyway. Because I made it, I want to see if it will do anything. <laughs> Voice grips that are welded to a slide hammer. Good spot. Any tighter than that. I'm gonna get it right up in there. Does that work? Kind of. Need a better angle on it though. I'm gonna grind a little bit on the, yeah, I'm gonna grind a little bit on the tip of that, right in the corner, see if we can get it drop a little higher. Yeah, so that one's tacked in, and that one's tacked in, just to kind of box in that corner. We'll weld it up later in case we need to fudge stuff around. Yeah, I probably wanna put that tailgate on at some point to make sure all our Alignments are decent. Cleaned up some of these flanges. I still got more to. Do. I gotta get that corner out of there. It's got a sec. And it's blown out some here. We'll see where this floor meets up with it. Whether I'm gonna go cut, put a lip, and then have another lip mat, you know, meet up to it, or are we just gonna? I'll still make the lip, but I may just weld right to this top section right here. And it would just take a beat of seam sealer and go. I think I've already done the other side, didn't I? No. I made a patch. Yeah, it was blown out right in the same place. We'll see. I think I'm to the point where I may want to whittle this into some kind of resemblance and start getting an idea how this is going to fit up. So if I need to scab the direction of uh, favoring this piece, I can. We are still, we still have to come back in and, and make out like a box over the end of this side of it and make a bolt for the latch that goes here for the tailgate. I ended up gotten the whole thing right out of there. Earlier I had built them, but um, as we tore into it, it really wasn't being held too much. <laughs> so we'll make that up too. But anyway, let's get this, mark that up. We'll knock it probably like within an inch of this line and we'll start sneaking up on it. How that looks. That side's up way too high right now. So you're going to need to do two things. One, we got to notch the bottom of this so it can come down a little further when it goes around the corner. And then the same on this side. This right now is higher. I'm just gonna go blow that corner off right there so that this panel can lay flush against this wall. All right, two little notches in it. One bar, one there. Pardon me. Okay. It's lovely. <laughs> this one is up too far yet. The whole thing has to come down. And it cannot come down because it is running into a little bit of metal. So let's we'll roll that little bit of metal out of the way for now. And if we need it later, we'll beat it back. Anyway. 
say right about, I should probably clip that bottom lip together. Just to reference it. Damn it. Looks long, doesn't it? So let's go over to the other side. So we go over here. I think we'll probably gotta notch it a little further. How do you see from way up there? Hold on. Yeah, sit down, relax. Came off the other side. Fine. I have to be able to go up. Maybe a hair. I'm gonna notch this just a little bit more. Yeah, a couple of things I can see on it right now. This seam needs to get rolled more and probably just be flatter. There's a big glob of metal from where they bunched that over. I don't know if we're just gonna go cut that and leave it, but that glob of metal needs to go. It's got too much distance going around so I think essentially I have to try to roll it this way because that gap won't close up okay <laughs> uh, I gotta I'm probably gonna go knock this all flush back up again so that I can have the panel come over and keep tucking it in until this touches get a better idea of where the stuff is going to meet up. That's it, close we are now. I'm gonna go clamp. Still has to go, should go up a little more. Yeah, it's gotta go up another quarter inch in the front. That's a little more like it. There's a clamp underneath in the back here and one right there. But at least now we can try to get that lips bent out so we can put that wherever we want that now. I think our next shot, maybe we'll go underneath and I'll, tra I'll trace from the back side where this body line is. Maybe we can probably even get rid of it a little bit more maybe. We'll see. I like the flange it, but we'll see. And yeah, that's my line. Now you can see why I left so much extra because when you're roughing it in, it's pretty rough. <laughs> Where they're actually going to go line up. So I think I'm going to go grab the flange two tool and we'll try to put a step in here and then we'll sneak up on this panel by trimming down and trying to get it all at the same. You know what I mean.
not bad. I think I want to take just because this, this look wants to seem like it's flared out a lot. I'm gonna try coming in with the shrinker and see if we could roll this material inward a little bit and give it more of a. That's what I kind of thought in the beginning. I thought I had the panel had more of a curve to it, and it doesn't. It's kind of straight up and down right there. See that gives us any improvement. I gotta clamp it. Throw some clamps on it. Let's see. Looks like it'll close up pretty good though. You can see here where it got a, a little lumpy because you know your flat surface trying to go around a curve, so it's a little wavy. Nothing a hammer can't fix. If there's some clamps on it, it'll get a better look. Again, there, they, that top cap is, is good enough. Again, a little bit of beating with hammer. We can get the last little bits to roll. This is where our next concern is. That right there. It's about a quarter inch at its max. A couple things I'm thinking of. One, maybe we could do the same. We could put it in a shrinker, try drawing this metal together, and get a little bit more of a curve out of this. And the other is possibly either putting a pie cut down here and just drawing it in and welding it back up, or we just rework this line. You know, we bring the line back, I don't know, probably about a half inch or so. Rework it, fold that lip, let it hang down here, and we just rebend and cut off the extra, kind of like we're doing here. I'm not sure. Let's go throw in the bender, uh, the uh, shrinker a little bit, see if that'll help. Problem is, again, it's a sharp curve, so. We're not going to be able to get in there that great. How about a dull chisel? A rounded one over. I'm going to try hammering. I'm going to try hammering right about here and see if I can reform this line a little bit. Oh, push on it. That's yeah, looking pretty good. I think we can move forward with where it is. I know you put a straight edge across here. It's got a gap on the bottom. It's, it's in too far, but because I was beating on the wheel well, the wheel well itself is on an angle like that. So this just needs to be pulled back. There is a bracket that's right in here. So it's this lip fighting this lip. It's kind of pivoting on the two. I haven't beat that edge dressed the way down and kind of done some grinding here, but I think we'll be okay. We can fudge with that later. What I want to do now is put the tailgate on because I don't know if that is a uh, square to the other side and, and on the gate, it actually locks into two and you know, encapsulates these two tabs. So we can actually hang it right off of them. But before I can do that, that's going to be in the way. So I guess we'll fold it. I think we're gonna, we are going to, because you can still like push in on this. And as you push in on it, you know, you'll be clamping and welding it. I think this mark is gonna move in a hair. So we are gonna 
do the same. I gotta figure out where the bottom is. And I'll fold that in, we'll cut off whatever excess we need down here. You got that side folded too. And I just wanna focus, I've been given some persuasion to use. I got about half of it out, it's much better. But it definitely, there's two things going on. Like this has too much of a roll right here. This has too much of a roll. Should be more straight out and, and, a, and a sharper bend right here. Instead, it's just like a constant curve. And then this one, again, still needs it. There's a support right here under it. And it's still a little leaning backwards. In other words, it, it needs to get wrenched on like that a little. Let me do that. Okay, definitely this is more proud than the quarter. I think what I'd like to do is see if we can get a, a tighter roll on this edge. I think it's just, it's just too gradual. If we could sharpen that up. I hate we have a dull edge. It's a stupid edge. Dull. Let's try a big old chisel. And a hammer. Well, actually, it's the next day. Sometimes I like to start things up by cleaning up a little. As you can tell, it's starting to turn into a, a bit of a pile. It's just a way. It's how I roll. <laughs> so I can bring a cart over here. I'm going to try to get some stuff on the cart and keep it off the, the truck as much. Yeah, sure. And then we'll go grab the tailgate and we'll bring that over. We'll see if we uh, have any racking going on that we need to correct before we go any further. Yeah, it might be a good idea to <laughs> latch those. That line looks decent. A little fat on the bottom there. Kind of looks like the whole thing can, eh. That's fine. That one just seems like it. Like the bottom of it actually has to be over a little. But then this gap looks okay. Where this one's even all the way across. Seems like it's got an extra bit of metal here compared to here. I'm gonna throw the brackets back on it again. I gotta locate this hole anyway for the upper part of the hinge. And just make sure everything kind of closes up. Possibly I might take and weld a bar across the top to tie the two walls together. I don't know if we can... The problem with that is it just gets in a way of whacking you in the head. Might be able to put something from that to that. How about we just...
trying to get it to come off of. Right now it's rubbing on the pins on both sides. And if it comes in, it should loosen up. There it goes. This, this side just dropped down on me. Right there, it's loose. Let's give her one more. I always kind of, so it's in the middle of the window. I can see the whole wall pulling towards us. The reason why I did it now is because that corner is not welded. I'll show you. Yeah, although the sheet metal going down the wall is kind of supporting it a little bit, the bottom corner between here and here, this triangle is all still free. All this stuff can still kind of move a little bit. It actually looks like the gap might even opened up a little bit there. But that's why I did it. So before that's welded and tacked and before that floor section is made, now it's uh, more in the correct position. So the rest of the stuff I make and start tacking, I want to hold it there. Or hopefully hold it there. Still missing a bolt down here, but... That'll be fine. Nice. I'm gonna go mark that location for that last bolt and probably jump on with that. We probably get into having to make the supports for behind that, make a plate with a nut on it, probably weld that on the back side kind of thing. And then build the inside. I get a strange feeling we need a hole right about get nice and center, nice and center. Well, I think our best bet is to take a piece of metal, eh, probably about four inches tall, and maybe inch and a half wide, wherever that width is down there. We'll make it an inch and a half wide. 16 gauge, we'll put it behind there where we like it, then mark it from the back side with the uh, drill bit again or a sharpie, and we'll drill a hole through it, weld a nut on it, then put it back on, bolt it together with the bracket, and we could probably get a couple tacks on this one and a couple tacks on here. I don't want to attach to this yet. I want to let that float for a little bit, so maybe we, if we can remove this and when we do the floor section, I'm not sure yet. I just don't want to commit to welding that yet. That's all. Let's go see how that works out for us. Something like that. I'm going to go put that back behind there, bolt it together, mark where it goes, clean up the area so they can get a good weld on it. I got it tacked in place. And now I should be able to take all this, this stuff off of here. That's a little draggy. I bet you I'm rubbing up against the sheet metal. What I did was I tapped on. Um, yeah, you can even see a dent. When it was together, I didn't take into consideration if I'm um, racked a little bit. And when I compared it over to the other side, I had the pin leaning slightly downhill. So when I put the two bolts in, I kind of kicked it a little bit into a better alignment. What I should have done was put the tailgate back on, actually. That would have, would have been sure it was right on the money, you know. I think we got it though. I say that now. Should have. That's where that's got to go. Now we 
have to weld through that. And I think we can weld up the other two pieces because we're going to box that in too. Uh, the other one's going to wrap. It's too bad this, I didn't make this even a little further out. Oh, the light's getting We could uh, actually bridge that, but I could weld it up there. I could weld it solid down here. I could weld that. I could weld that. And then I'm going to make a box that goes right across to here and back. And I'm going to weld all of that up. And then we can build the floor. You agree with me? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. I had to. I'd be pissed if... Uh... Let's go one more click. That was one click too many. <laughs> All right, see, the tab's bent in pretty good. Now I just need to make that. The whole thing can drop down a little bit. That should tighten that gap up. And we, mental note is to add a little to the paper doll on that side. Just a hair. It's gonna grow a little bit anyway, because when you trace it, gets larger. See what we got. Just didn't want to commit to that. It's going to be pretty good. Now we're going to take a Sharpie. Of course, I don't have it with me, right? I left that over there. I'll mark where that bracket is. Notch around it. It is sticking out. Richard's. Right uh, there. So we go in there. Right. A little lower. And it does this. Would there be any sense to keep that little bit of metal in the back? Or should I just cut it right out of there? I think we should leave this open. We'll just leave that open. Whatever crap goes in there. And then on the bottom, I'm going to drill a hole probably right through the bottom or right through the bottom of this. Anything that gets backed up in it. Let me get that notched out of there. Get that dropped in and get a better idea. I think that's going to work for us, so. though. You think? Hit it with a hammer? Could have gotten a little less hoopty right there, but that's fine. We'll get that away to welder. And I think I can buzz all that except for right there. I got a little sloppy, I guess. Oh well. We are going to buzz together, whatever we can buzz together on that all the way around. And I'll bring you back. Well, if it were a woman, she wouldn't be pretty. She has good childbearing hips. That should work. That's pretty stout. Everything on the inside is all welded up too. I don't know if I showed it. Actually, you probably did see it just a little while ago when I was putting the piece in. And then everything else is welded around. That one's buzzed in. I built up on the bottom there. And then a patch. Where are you? Then that one in there. 
I think we're to the point. I'm gonna leave the outside skin off. Again, we're gonna do that last. We can build now build this while we have access. I think it'll help us out a bit. Hmm. So I'm gonna start building the pattern. I wanna capture that corner in the back. Then we'll sneak up on the rest of it. Let's and knock another half inch out of that right there. That's what I want to do. And I'm going to take it and bend it up like a flange. Let's go. This is going to sit about two inches lower. But the radius should be pretty close. So I'm going to just go take it. Actually, I want to come in a little further. I want to be able to have my outside edge here. Hold on. Hold on. Don't we just, we'll give it some good space. Yeah, I want to be able to come out to here on the floor. All right, so let's go. Get that whole dimension right there. And all I'm really concerned about is this back turn. We're going to patch patterns together. So I'm trying to do it all in one. I think we're better off kind of building like this, you know. Just rubbing it with my hands. <laughs> Stop it. Right. That left me a line. I'm going to go cut that out. That should be that curve for us. I'm going to clamp on that, that corner piece now for a little bit better eyeball of it, I guess. I'm popping in there, like I said, it's about two inches lower than the other spot. And it looks like I need to trim a little bit of this top off and it should be able to tuck in a little bit better. I'm still gonna do a flange. I'm still gonna do a flange. So there's like another half inch that's gonna get added to this. We're going to bend it down and then make, can use that to, to be the what bridges the gap. In other words, I'm not making a flat piece of metal. I'm just welding this to this. It's going to have a bend on it and then we're going to nail it. That looks pretty good. I think we're good. That's close enough. Let's throw a couple pieces of tape on that maybe and we'll start making the, the rest of the pattern. It's something like that. So we need a flange. The half inch flange down here, there, down. We're going to add a half inch to it. Same here. I think I'm going to go up here. I'm trying to write up, upside down. <laughs> and where else? It's going to butt up here and then down here. Right? Flange, flange, all the way around. Spray it just in case. In case it turns into two pieces. And that inside piece, we're going to go up or down there. Probably up. I'll be able to weld it from up here, maybe. Well, actually, the the wheel well won't, that back piece won't be there. We can get in there. But go down. All right, going down. Going down. I think the chances are getting it out of there in one piece. And the other part, when we go to put this back in, we're gonna have an issue trying to get between here and here. So one of them is going to have to get some kind of fudging. Do you see anything I screwed up on? If you do, say so now. I want to hear you later. Then we're going to cut on that line. And this is the flange that we're going to bend down. And I left so this is where it would normally meet on the body, but in case we need to go fudge the panel, I left this long another half inch also. 
and we'll trim that last once we get it like tucked into the corner. Yes, a new to me shop toy. We're gonna try catching. Yes, we could have been that one. That one we're screwed on. These two are gonna kind of suck. I was thinking of maybe a crease going on those. Let's go pop out. See if that helps us. You guys can barely see what you're looking at. So that needs to get bent down. Uh, if we can get a crease on that. This is 18 gauge we're working with. I know it's gonna mangle that a little bit, that's okay. This is a six foot break, finger break. Good to 16 gauge. Yeah, I know, huh? Let's go give it that. Nice pen. Get. Not gonna be able to get much. We put a crease probably on this one. A little bit. I got kick out another one. I want to fit between. That make it. I'll figure it out. If you can cheat a bend in there. As long as it gives me a line to start with. Yeah, I'm not gonna get that in there. One of them is up anyway. Down, down. That one's overshot too. How to do that one on a vise. If we get any of these. Can I get that one up? How about any of the downs? I think about that. This is a Harbor Freight uh, bead roller I modified a couple of months ago and I'm trying to get better at using it. Well, 
I want to use it to get better at using it. Let's put it that way. Again, it's all new to me. I have these two. I'm going to try using it like a tipping die. There's three different sets of setup. And this is the one with the most stagger to it. And I've left some space in between. I'm hoping that I can bring the piece in and let it go bend up on an angle. As long as I can get a little bit of a bend on it and a crease, then I can kind of hammer off of that. And I want to hold that, hold that line. It, it is a guess on my part, but that's my plan. So if I can roll that and just create, you know, a line of sorts. Let's give it a shot. Grab the piece of scrap. Let's just go see if it's even going to do anything. So that is actually going to tip it up towards us. We can remember that when we go to do it. What direction are we going? thick metal too. Let's do it. It's powered by a electric wheelchair motor. You can have to suck it in a little. Thanks. The only problem is it hits that upper one. It puts a bend going the other way, but that's okay. I could live with that because we just hammer that because we're going to continue to fold that edge down anyway, right? Let's give that a shot. Of course, we do is mess it up. We just beat it back with a hammer. All right, so I want to... That's what my end result is going to be. I want just like it, just like it is. I have a real good habit of making the opposite of what I want. If we get in there. Should have just hammered that down and did that roll first. I can open it up. I, I just want to keep it at that adjustment. Let's just sneak it in there. That was worth <laughs> Back it up. I could probably push. I want to pull up on it. Do you want to get out of it? Or should we hit it one more time? Yeah, because we're not going to get any more. Let's just roll out. Good. Probably could have backed it up a, a little bit. That's all right. Let's go beat it with a hammer. Again, for anybody who does not know, I am trying to educate myself on making metal stuff. So all this machinery I've been gathering over the course of summer and trying my hand at them and getting an education. And I figure you guys are gonna do the same with me. This is the shrinker of a stretcher shrinker. The idea is going to be to bunch this metal together all the way around. So as you bunch this, it gives it some place to go when it wants to go fold over. So you want to bunch it on itself. And if you, you can't see it, there's a little smiley face here. Reminding me what's what. I think plus it's also going to flatten that lip out for us too. Let's see how we do. We'll go around, we'll, we'll flatten it. Keep coming back.
Let's see. Are we even going to be able to see? Yeah, that's exactly what I was talking about. We're not going to be able to get in there. Hmm. If I get it, the slice in the right area, can I tip it? I might be able to do that. See what I'm looking at? No, appreciate it. Maybe we can tip it up into place, put the slice in it. Now what we'll do, we'll make the slice, but we'll roll it up on each side. And then we can hammer it back down whatever side, you know, whatever I'm off a little. I just put a slice in it. We could bend the metal up, bend the metal up and push it back down. And... Let's see. I didn't slice it this way and this way and roll it back. Let's go. Damn. All right, don't tell me you're not going to be able to get between those two points. There we go. Actually, I can get rid of that. Need that there. to get more room I need to mark it right up here I gotta notch it to this side I have to I'm gonna cut it on this side and roll that metal back it's got a busted lip now what do we say something like That little jog. Yeah, we gotta get down lower. The downward lip on this side. That's causing me an issue. I'm gonna notch that. It is so close that yes, I want to start hitting it with a hammer. But you guys are sitting in the bed of the truck, so <clears throat> hold on. So we have too much metal here. Yeah, this this lip needs to get moved in more that way. We're tight. It's gonna be pretty good all the way around. But we just cannot go back far enough. I'm gonna shine a light on it, just make sure I'm not hanging on, on anything, but I think that's what we're dealing with. Yeah, that was normally made in two pieces. I wanted to try to make it in one, just because. Why did that seem like it was so much easier? Getting close. I think I'm holding, held up on a weld over there. And we gotta notch it right. We need to get rid of the lip. There's a lip stop right on the corner of the lip stop, so I want it to be gone. Right there. So we can get rid of that metal. Yeah, how about now? Feeling all kinds of warm and cozy, I'm going to bend this lip a little bit more.
except for a rookie. It can go that way a little. So this lip has to get folded in. It's looking pretty good. The back, you know, I'm more concerned about the back. That cap looks pretty good. We haven't even squeezed it together yet. Looks like we do a little bit of relief there. And right here, we bend that back more. It'll allow that to go that way just a little bit more. Just a little bit more too. I think that's pretty good. Just gotta do some massaging. I think that's all right. How much are we pushed out? Yeah, this has to. We gotta make sure that that is. Oh, well, there's a problem. <laughs> so, now we check. Hmm. It has to go. Uh, that way. <laughs> I thought it was all set, so I looked around the corner. Yeah, that's the way it works. All right, well, I'm going to go keep picking away at this. Stop filming and focus on what I'm doing, but I'll get it. Well, I'd say that's close enough for what we're going for. I mean, they got the back tucked in. It looks really decent against this. But we need to put some plug welds and get it out. Every time is like a learning experience. Come to me. That was easy. I'm gonna mark right here and right here. Well, no, that's where we gotta draw the line to spot weld, drill holes to spot weld down to this. And everything else I think is pretty much self-explained. Oh, we got right here too. So let's go and we'll put a mark right there. And hmm, I should probably use a straight edge. I'm gonna use a straight edge. I'm gonna mark that side over there. But then we need to possibly put a couple of ribs down it for stiffening. And I'd say we'll probably put one We'll go with right here between these two. Does that look roughly in the middle? Yeah, we'll go for, maybe we'll do one right here. You think maybe back a little further? Mm, yeah, because it's probably gonna crinkle right there. Let's go and put it, let's go put one right here. And we'll draw straight lines on that. We'll uh, bead roll a little dent inside those. Yeah, so this works out for us. This might. Is it going to fit through there? Oh, that's going to be close. We're going to find out. I think we should have enough room. Let's call it right there. I do not have enough distance between the top and the bottom. Guess I should have done them first, huh? We'll get it one way or another. Reverse it. The other one. Yeah, right there. Ah, 
tight squeeze. <laughs> I think we'll call that one. This one might give us, or might do, I'm gonna go over to the grinder. I'm gonna knock a little bit of this off because that's what it's doing, it's hanging up on that right there. We don't need all that lip anyway. Well guys, at this point, I think I'm gonna cut it for tonight and uh, probably cut it for this video. It's probably fairly long enough as it is. We've got that panel made out. We got all this rebuilt inside here. We got this one to fit, decent. So I'm happy with the, the progress. I'm not gonna go ahead and probably show the welding like I did. Uh, I did the metal work last time and then I jumped ahead and, and welded everything up. It's, it just takes its toll on the cameras between splatter and the uh, there's like a light sensor in the camera it really kind of uh, takes it for a number. I have uh, wiped out about two or three cameras doing that. So I'm going to just uh, jump ahead, probably have that put together. When we come back, maybe we can get on the gas tank and put a radiator in it. That way we can put the doghouse back together, put the interior back in with the rest of the interior, which is that consists of the passenger seat. <laughs> but yeah, we'll do the radiator and, uh, we put the doghouse all back in again, close all that up, make it to the point where it actually is, uh, it's already registered. And, uh, we can street drive it. But again, we still have more metal work to do. Uh, and as far as, you know, my next video more than likely will not be on this truck. I'm not saying that it won't, but more than likely it won't be on this truck because I like to jump around from thing to thing. So just be patient if, you know, <laughs> you really want to see it, wait a year and then play it on a playlist. Uh, body work is, it takes forever. Bondo, you know, that part of it. Welding can do pretty good. The Bondo part of it, the problem I have in, in with some of the other vehicles too, is uh, it's been going on about three years now. I got, I guess you call it tennis elbow. I tore tendons in my right arm. So the sanding stuff really takes its toll on me. It gets it to the point where I can't use my right arm very well. So uh, I was all set to go have surgery done on that and then yeah, something came along, you guys are aware of. <laughs> Gotta put all that stuff on hold. So, you know, we'll see how it goes with this, but that's what's also holding up the other projects that are uh, waiting on uh, work that's a bunch of sanding, uh, namely the double cab. So, guys, thanks for all hanging out with me. I really appreciate it. I do. Glad you can uh, do some wrenching with me when I uh, learn how to do some sheet metal work together and uh, move forward on this project. Till the next one, I'll see you. Bye. Oh, for, before I forget, because <laughs> I know I'm going to hear about it, uh, why didn't you put different stuff in between all the seams when you weld it? Why didn't you uh, uh, acid coat? Why didn't you convert it? Why didn't you get rid of all the rust? Why didn't you this? Why didn't you that? Because the truck is a total pile of rust. Everything on it, in it, around it, in every seam is loaded with rust. Everywhere you look, and this is just the top side, the bottom side, you know, everything's just covered in rust. So what I do after I, I paint what I paint, then I come back and I, I use a, an oil mix to seal it from rusting any further. It's a New England truck. It uh, definitely helps it out for the long run. And uh, that's what I'll end up doing. So you're welcome to do whatever you want on your projects, but that's how I do it on mine. It's worked out quite well for me. Right, now I'm done, I guess. Wait, you didn't think I was going to bring you back after I was done welding? Leave you hanging. <laughs> Looking pretty good. Tailgate lines are decent. That needs a little trimming on the very edge with the two meat. Looks like I feathered them together on that side, but not on that side. That's a far improvement from 
big old rust holes, huh? Nice. I got a couple of patches I got to make. One right there. And another one, I think, right here. Somewhere there's pinholes right there. Might even be able to get them just by filling them. Yeah, we won't look at that yet. Let's go drop the tailgate. No lube. Not bad, maybe a little bit more fudging. I haven't moved it around right, I just bolted it on. Gap right here, looks like I took this one and I rolled it a little too soon. So it's a hair in further than the upper part is. Go. Let's go put the strap on. There's bars that go on here. Little support bars that go in between. We'll leave it in the middle for now. We'll just use this to hold it. <laughs> Good evening. You can't see a thing. It's dark over there. I'll turn the light on. A little light on the subject. It's a little better. Yeah, so works okay. I screwed up right here. So I had to make an, a little uh, angle piece to fill up that sp space. I cut it too short. And then the only other thing I wish is around the corner. I can't see what you guys are seeing, but around the corner. The gap's not terrible, but I wish I kind of formed that a little bit better to match the Inner side. It's all going to get seam sealed anyway. After it gets uh, sanded, a little better. The truck still needs to get sanded, seam sealed, then it's just going to get rust oleum uh, primer and then rust oleum black paint. I'll do the same. Probably the same black line that somebody else already did before. I'll clean up that part of it. You won't be able to see daylight through it anymore or under it. That can haul some stuff with the tailgate down, huh? It's a fairly long layout there. See what it is. It's seven foot. It's 88 inches, seven and a half feet to there. And roughly nine and a half feet, a little over nine and a half feet to the edge of the tailgate. It's not bad, you can haul some decent stuff. With the gate down. We're gonna try putting a bumper on it. It needs a little bit of love. Got a couple of. What was the best looking part of the truck? Now it's starting to look like the radius part. Got a couple of kinks in it. Yeah, it's gotta, gotta come out. What do you think? With or without? Kind of liked it without. We'll see. We'll see when it's together. Get away. Hmm. All right, guys. Now I'm done. Bye. Yeah, but how's it look on the ground? <laughs> Thank you.
Ooh, so sexy.